Any right. tips? Cheers, mate, yeah. All right, the idea folks went with on, guys. Smooth. Smooth? Easy, yeah. That's the thing, yeah, okay. You're fine, anyway. All he said, don't do a full swing, don't hit it hard. That goes against everything in my golfing game. What is it that springs to mind when you think about the Open? The world's best chopping out of deep rough at Muirfield. Battling the Scottish wind and lashing rain at St Andrews. Or those little puffs of sand when balls land on sunbaked dunes. The Open is golf's most historic and coveted championship. Played on our game's most hallowed turf. A championship still played today. Born where golf began. This series documents the trip of a lifetime, showing that anyone can follow in the footsteps of champions and taste the glory and history of those pioneers that came before us. So we're here at Musselburgh Old Course, which is probably the oldest course in the world. There's uh, documented evidence that golf was played here in 1672. 72. So wow. that's uh, quite a years long way away. There's a golf. castle up on the hill there, which is where uh, Mary Queen of Scots used to knock about. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently she played here. So yeah, it's just a municipal course this now, so you can come and play here. For, you know, you can come and play in your jeans like my dad is and play for, you know, £15 or something, I think it is. So, but they hosted the Open, when was it? In the 1870s, 1880s, six times. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We were getting hickories today as well, yeah. so we're playing with uh, the old school clubs from the 1800s, so that's going to be interesting. I've never played. I've hit one shot with them before and I hit a like, a, I don't know what club it was, because they're not five or six iron or anything. Mashy. Mashy or something like that. I hit this bullet straight <laughs> stinger yeah. that was, I was actually impressed at where it went, but yeah. um, I'm interested to actually play nine holes, just nine holes this course, so. And they've even got me, being left-handed, a set of hickories. I can only imagine that they're not the originals. They must be reincarnations yeah, of. Yeah, I mean, but, maybe when you were left-handed back then, you'd just have to play right-handed. Absolutely. Yeah, there was no such thing. So, I'm looking forward to playing those left-handed versions. Yeah, I reckon they'll be whippy. They won't be stiff, <laughs> will they? <laughs> Not a right lot of room for error there, is there? <laughs> <laughs> Through the fence and into the rough, yeah. So first shot, just topped it about 100 yards, just come past here into the horse racing track. It says here, it sat down a little bit, and it says here, rule, ball landing in hoof print, following verification by playing partner, rule 24, 25, ground under repair applies. That's in a hoof print, that, innit? I can, move, I can move it, yeah? Ah, that's a hoof, I think. Yeah? That's a hoof. Yeah, so, so I can put it there, yeah? Sit it up nice. The course is unique in that it's bounded by a horse racing track, with a couple of holes sitting outside or spanning the track itself. The red-bricked racecourse buildings and grandstand are the site of the original clubhouse, belonging to the Honourable Company of Edinburgh Golfers, who subsequently moved location to Muirfield. Along the south side of the course runs the main road to East Lothian's other famous courses. The course can also lay claim to being the first location to standardise the four and a quarter inch diameter hole. Why four and a quarter? Well, basically just because that was the size of the clay pipe they used to cut it. The RNA adopted it and made it mandatory for all courses in 1893. Yes, 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 yes! <laughs> <gasps> I reckon I give this a rip. That just looks like your five iron. I'm gonna stick with this. You gotta start it off here and you put a wick down and you gotta thread it across the wick and then when it gets to the end, tip and 
you got to loop it round and pull it through. You can see it goes underneath there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's bizarre how they did it. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> you really have not got to take it back that far at all, have you? Jesus. Is that it there? Try again. Check that. Nah. <laughs> you saying check to hickory gloves. <laughs> spin, spin. Oh, it's off the ground. Because of that edge. Yeah, that's what you gotta do, innit? Yeah, you've got this. Uh, just, I was born too, uh, too late. You like history on this trip, but the story of Mrs. Fornham's pub, which is the white building at the back left, uh, is. You know, I, would love to know the year, but back in the day when there was the big fierce rivalries and the biggest name was old Tom Morris and Willie Park. They used to get big money matches and I guess tour around golf courses and, and play when they were challenged. But the story for this course in Mrs. Fornham's is uh, old Tom was playing Willie Park, but it was quite a fierce match. And I think the locals, fans you could call them, got involved stamping on old Tom's ball and <laughs> shouting through his backswing and really getting into it, like, I guess a bit Ryder Cup style almost, but for <laughs> the different uh, families in, uh, in, in Scotland, and uh, I think by the time he got to the third, which we just played and got to this tee, he'd had enough. So he walked in to Mrs. Fornham's during his match and just, you know, Willie Park carried on playing by himself, set a score, and I guess he probably won, but old Tom just had enough. Just as fierce as our game today, yeah? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Great strike, all. The longer fourth hole requires a semi-blind tee shot over a small rise, crosses the racetrack and ends in front of the famous Mrs. Foreman's house a local inn where in the past drinks could be served to golfers through a greenside window. Turning for home, the coastal stretch gives outstanding views of Arthur's seat in Edinburgh City. What are your thoughts on the course of Musselburgh, old course? I mean, I think we're all just saying it's... I like it, it's very quirky, especially with hickories. I wouldn't play it if I wasn't playing with hickories. Yeah. I would definitely play it, but with hickories it makes it that much better. You've definitely got to think in the way that the ball reacts with the turf and the greens, it's golf how it's sort of meant to be in a sense, but yeah, it is what it is. It's the world's you know, oldest golf club it's yeah, still yeah. be played on. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yes, Ollie. Great shot. Yeah. I think there's a ravine down there, shot but to yeah, myself. shot. The, no <laughs> the noise when it comes off the face. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get up. Get out of that gauze bush, though. It's good. They've got no, like, fire in them, have they, when you hit a ball? There's, like, no... There's, like, that's what I was looking at the ball and thinking, yeah, it's going... But then that's messing my head, because it's, like, it just runs out of steam. Yeah. Okay. Strike. Oh, shot! Yeah. Wow. Great shot. So I um, love places like this, but in particular, the history, as you just said, it's, it's all about the history. The story of how Musselburgh came to host it was about 1870 was the last time the Open was played right. at Prestwick, um, you know, when it, from its continuous string. Yeah, yeah. And then young Tom Morris won three Opens in a row, so won the belt, yeah. the Open Championship belt, three times in a row, and because of in sport, gets to keep it. Yeah, yeah. So he kept it. And then at the time, Presswick wouldn't sort of fork out, I think it was £25 yeah. for a new belt. 
So there was, you know, no, no open was being played because there was no yeah, belt, yeah. no trophy. Nothing to win, yeah. Exactly. So then um, the rota came into existence because Prestwick, Musselboro, and then St Andrews. Yeah. I think it was a ten each. Essentially, ten pounds <laughs> they all put in to, to buy the new trophy. Yeah. Um, and then that's how it came here in 1872. Was the first time it was played here at Musselboro. Wow. And I'm fairly certain that young Tom Morris then went on to win three opens here as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, good player. Let's try and win a belt. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, good put, youngin. Musselboro Links, the old course, is unique. It's one of the original Open Championship courses, oh, wow. virtually untouched over time right, and by right, visitors. Right. We definitely recommend playing oh. it with hickories. It's a right laugh and something a little different from the norm. Left again. You can hire them from the pavilion. Yeah. As you can see, they take a bit of getting used to. Yuck. But once you get the grip of the whippy wooden shafts and tiny club faces, they'll allow you to hit that perfect type of ball flight for tackling a windy day. Musselboro Lynx is dubbed the cradle of golf. Although there's evidence proving that golf was played here in 1672, <laughs> it's rumoured that Mary Queen of Scots played here as early as 1567. Did you bag that putter? <laughs> 